Coming up on Wavelength, LCRA helps pass important legislation to help clean up the state's rivers. The board approves a new operating budget for fiscal year 1992. We'll take you to the bottom of Lake Travis for a view of Mansfield Dam we're sure you've never seen before. And the board honors LCRA's longest serving employee. Those stories and more next on Wavelength. From the Lower Colorado River Authority, this is Wavelength. Hi everybody and welcome to Wavelength. Well, the LCRA board has approved a new budget and a five-year spending plan that should prove to be fairly challenging. The operating and maintenance budget for fiscal year 1992 is about $95 million. And although there will be increases over the next four years, those increases will be smaller than in the past. We asked General Manager Mark Rose if he's comfortable with the spending goals that have been set. I'm comfortable. More importantly, I think, is the fact that senior management is comfortable. I, I take a great deal of pride in the fact that I didn't put this budget together. You know, this is not Mark Rose's budget for LCRA. The board laid out the goals and objectives and, and the financial plan, and they've said, you know, folks, here are the rules of the game. Here's where we need to be, and here are some of the things that we think need to get done. And I gave that to the management team and, and they went off and put their budgets together. Electric operations did their budget, corporate services did theirs, conservation, environmental quality did theirs, and natural resources did theirs. And uh, that's the way it ought to work. And so, you know, I take comfort in it because the, the management team at this agency has said that, that we can make all this happen. Mark, uh, the employees will wonder, of course, can this be done, this budget be done without layoffs? Well, we don't have a layoff plan in this budget. It's not our goal to, to lay anybody off. We do have a goal to eliminate positions through attrition, and that's not going to be easy to do, but they are that, just goals. So our challenge is to cut our cost and to find ways to be more efficient and to not fill vacancies and to make it all work. Now, we will fill some vacancies and we will bring in new people, but also people will retire, people will leave. I mean, that, that happens. So I think we can do it without layoffs, uh, but I'm not going to say it's going to be easy because it isn't. I, John Hall, do solemnly swear, do solemnly swear, that I will. Former LCRA Senior Director of Conservation and Natural Resources, John Hall, was sworn in by Governor Ann Richards as the newest member of the Texas Water Commission. Hall, who is the first African-American ever to be appointed to the commission, has now been made chairman. The appointment marks an historic day in Texas. Governor Richards has promised and shown the dawn of a new day in Texas. My appointment to the Texas Water Commission could never have happened a generation, a decade, or even a year ago. The new Texas is inclusive of those who have been long denied and ignored. John brings to this commission a background, a strength of qualification and skill that would be eagerly anticipated on any governing body. And yet I think, as Gary said, he is uniquely qualified to work on the Texas Water Commission. As an assistant to President Carter and Senator Benson and as Deputy Land Commissioner, Administrator at the Lower Colorado River Authority, and as a citizen with a lifetime of public involvement, John has demonstrated a second-to-none commitment to water quality, water conservation, and water energy. And John brings with him the administrative skills to turn commitment into action. The Texas Legislature, in the session just ended, passed a bill called the Texas Clean Rivers Act. 
this water quality legislation is significant and represents a major step toward cleaning up and protecting all rivers across the state. It tells river authorities uh, across this state to be concerned about water quality and it tells cities and river authorities to work together to be to be concerned about water quality and it tells the Water Commission to look at water quality on a river basin basis. So you bring all that home, what does it mean for LCRA? Well number one, uh, we drafted uh, significant portions of the bill and we're doing a lot of things already that that bill uh, calls for. Uh, number two, what good does it do for us to clean up our stretch of the Colorado River if the folks above us ain't doing the same thing? Uh, so if we don't all work together, we may clean up our section of it, or we may get Austin to clean up their section of it, but if somebody below us or above us doesn't do it, you still don't have a clean river. So it's a landmark piece of environmental legislation, and LCRA played a leadership role in, uh, in getting it drafted. Senator Barrientos from Austin uh, sponsored it in the Senate. Robert Saunders uh, sponsored it in the House, and uh, I know they're very proud of it and, uh, and are very proud of the role that LCRA played in, in, in helping to get it passed. The bill requires, among other things, ongoing water quality assessment of all the rivers in Texas and that a report on their condition be presented to the Texas Water Commission every two years. Well, the majority of what we found has been glass. I mean, it's just been incredible. It seems like every, every time we think we've cleaned up a spot, there's still more glass. <laughs> About 300 employees from the city of Austin and LCRA joined together for the second annual Town Lake Cleanup. The National Guard also joined in this year with four of these special bridge erection boats, which are ideal for maneuvering in shallow water along the shoreline. Tons of trash were once again removed from the lake and creeks, and a special thanks goes out to everyone who participated. James Piper and Lewis Thompson are divers with Applied Research Laboratories. They've done volunteer dives for LCRA many times over the years. Today, they're going down to check out a problem with the utility gate here at Mansfield Dam. They use this video camera to record the dive, and they also have a special communication system which allows them to talk to each other and to Joe Wiggers on the surface. I guess I'm ready to go ahead, huh, Jack? This huge cage is called a trash rack. It keeps debris from entering the floodgates or the generator intakes, which are called pinstocks. First thing that you notice when you get in the dam is that, especially when they're generating, is how the water vibrates. Just uh, just through the water flow through the uh, generators there, it actually just physically vibrates you while, in the, while you're in the water. That's the first thing that gets your attention. This utility gate, which is used to seal off floodgates for maintenance purposes, will not go all the way down into position. After about 15 minutes at a depth of 110 feet, the divers are confident they have located the trouble. They head for the surface. What do you think it's gonna to take to fix it, Sounds uh, The uh, ears on the dam, on the uh, gate, they're just gonna to have to width and lengthen them. They're, there's, there's two little uh, ears, and they'll simply have to build a new one and make it an inch longer. Then, then the gate will be able to slide down. Hydro foreman Mike Stone says they have already modified the gate and it is now working fine. An interesting test was conducted recently at Buchanan Dam with the Management Coordinating Committee looking on. LCRA crews from transmission operations faulted or short-circuited a 138 kV transmission line simulating a lightning strike. The purpose was to test equipment that is supposed to isolate the short-circuited line from the rest of the system in this type of emergency situation. The equipment performed properly. Afterwards, General Manager Mark Rose was given a tour and detailed explanation of how the equipment works. The Hill Country Association of Soil and Water Conservation Districts held its spring meeting in Llano County in May. The focus, a presentation on LCRA's Creekside Conservation Program, which targets soil erosion. The actual shaping cost about $600 an acre. The group visited demonstration areas on local ranches that have had serious erosion problems. This pasture has been reshaped, root plowed, and planted for future grazing rotation. The future looks like that we're probably going to have uh, more requests from landowners to participate and other soil conservation districts to participate than, than we can uh, really 
uh, get to. So uh, we've got a waiting list uh, type situation that, that's developing as a result of our success on these, these projects. Lano County officials later presented Bill West with a plaque honoring LCRA's soil conservation efforts in the area. This group of students from Austin High and Martin Junior High have a special interest in the engineering marvel that is Buchanan Dam. They are members of TAME, the Texas Alliance for Minorities in Engineering. LCRA sponsors the Austin High chapter of TAME, which involves students in engineering activities throughout the year. There is also a summer jobs program for TAME students and college scholarship awards. When I first joined, I didn't know much about engineering and I was only a freshman and, you know, through visiting the LCRA plants and visiting other places like that, I just, I decided I liked it and I decided to go ahead and pursue a career in engineering at UT. Benice is one of two Austin High students to receive $1,000 scholarships from TAME for next semester. Can you write down 10 for DO? The Colorado River Watch Network is just over a year old and it has already become more successful than anyone imagined. 400 students are now involved in collecting water samples at 38 different sites on the Colorado. The data is used by LCRA to determine water quality along the river. The students recently got together at Inks Lake State Park where they shared their ideas and compared experiences from the last year. The River Watch Symposium is a chance for all of our student monitors to get together. We've got kids here from Bay City to Lake Travis to Johnson City that all have a chance to sit down and talk to each other and tell, them, tell each other what they've found. Cassie Delarius has been collecting samples on Barton Creek for the past year, and now she's passing on her knowledge to other students in the program. Well, I've learned how to test the creek and what's going on in the creek area. I've also been involved in a lot of political action with um, the development sites around Barton Creek. Amanda Eads has been testing Shoal Creek and says that the experience has persuaded her to pursue a college degree in water quality. She, like other students here, feel they can and are making a difference. I think we are the solution. I think this generation is the generation that can be the solution for uh, me because we have to start with this generation if we can't wait to the next one. 32 schools are now active in the Colorado River Watch network and the excitement seems to be growing. LCRA is joining forces with the LBJ Science Academy, educators, the Texas Water Commission, and other agencies to create a non-point source pollution unit for public schools. The curriculum is directed at teenagers in 7th and 8th grades in schools in our statutory district. It's going to teach them about non-point source pollution and how it's created and what they can do to help control it because non-point source pollution is a form of pollution that is generated by the way we live and work. The committee will work with teachers this summer to write the lesson plans. The unit will be pilot tested next school year and should be ready for use throughout the LCRA 10 County District in 1992. LCRA is the permanent co-sponsor of Scouting for Food, an annual food drive of the Boy Scouts of America. Over 100 businesses in 22 Central Texas communities participated this year, and 2,500 Boy Scouts went door to door. All total, over 25,000 pounds of food was collected, the largest total ever. This is the Crenshaw Dogay Turfgrass Farm in Bastrop County. Austin golfer Ben Crenshaw and partner David Dogay started this 400 acre farm last year to introduce new and improved varieties of turf grasses to the area. Irrigation water for the farm comes from the nearby Colorado River. At a recent field day attended by researchers and industry professionals, Crenshaw and Dogay showed off their low water use, low maintenance buffalo grasses. Crenshaw also used buffalo grass in a variety of situations on the recently completed Crenshaw Coor Golf Course at the Barton Creek Country Club in Austin. Not only golf course, it has, it has such tremendous uh, recreational uses, playgrounds, parks, highway right-of-ways, uh, developments. Uh, anywhere where you can cut your water bill, I think that'll be important, in a, an important grass. Crenshaw says that because of growing water and environmental concerns, buffalo grass, which only needs to be watered about every three weeks, 
is the grass of the future for Texas and the rest of the Southwest. LCRA board member Neil Norris recently helped release 100,000 striped bass fingerlings into Lake Buchanan at Llano County Park. The fish represent the annual lease payment from the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service for LCRA land used for the fish hatchery near Inks Dam. This is the third year LCRA has received the nearly $6,000 payment in fish. The year 1947, Harry Truman was in the White House, Buford Jester was governor of Texas. That same year, 19-year-old Daniel Stavanoff, fresh out of the Navy, went to work for LCRA building a transmission line in Flatonia, Texas. Now, he was later hired as a patrolman in the Schulenburg district, and he stayed with the authority for the next 44 years. The board of directors honored Daniel Stavanaugh at the May meeting for his many years of hard work and dedication to LCRA as he retires to a life of leisure, right? Wrong. Stavanaugh has been operating this farm and ranch on the side since 1952. He now has 30 head of Beefmaster cattle and 26,000 laying hen. He says working on the farm helps keep things in perspective. These people who say they got problem, trouble, they don't need to go to a psychiatrist. Just come down here for eight hours on the farm here, run a tractor and work around these chicken houses, then their problems is over with. Stavanaugh has worked for six of the seven general managers LCRA has had, and he has seen tremendous growth and change in the electrical distribution system. But over all those years, he says he never felt like leaving LCRA. Several different places to, or offered me a job to come work for them. I said, no, I stayed with them here. I've been here that long with them. I enjoyed working uh, with the company, and uh, there's no uh, other place I would want to go. But like I told you, that this, uh, LCRA is a good organization. It's the people that makes the company. Daniel's wife, Doreen, says the main change since his retirement is that the phone doesn't ring in the middle of the night anymore, calling him out. Stavanaugh has worked at LCRA longer than anyone, and his advice to those coming along behind him... Always uh, see if you can face a person to do any dealing with them face to face, and always leave them with a smile. That's what my mom always preached to us. Well, that's it for this edition of Wavelength. Thanks for being with us. Next month, a special treat, a newly completed video on the Fayette Power Project. We'll see you then.